Hello in the first chapter of Benoni course. I would like to show you three best games of this system. I think that this, this games, this following the games are definitely some illustrative examples. Let me start with the game between Boris Spassky and Robert James Fisher played in 1972 in the World Championship match. Of course, there is some transposition, but it of course doesn't matter because right now we have the Benoni system. Knight c3, g6, knight d2. Of course, this is one of the possible lines and possible systems for white. Robert James Fisher just developed his knight to d7, e4, bishop g7, bishop e2, castles, castles, rook e8, queen c2. Boris Spassky just defended his e4 pawn, right now it is defended by two knights and the queen. And here this is the time for, I would say, at the time stunning move, because Robert James Fisher played the move knight h5. Nowadays this is quite a standard maneuver, this is not that uh, surprising. But at that moment it was absolutely astonishing move, because black si simply allowed blight, black white to shatter his pawn structure on king's side. All, all of the grandmasters at the commentary room were totally surprised with that move. Boris Spassky took on h5. Let's have a look at some other possibilities. For example, if g3, just to prevent any jumps on f4 from black's knight. Then knight e5, f4, knight g4, knight c4, and quite a risky move, bishop c3, with definitely double-edged position. If not g3, and for example, white opts for the move f4, this also prevents some jumps on f4, then bishop d4, king h1, and knight d to f6, just again attacking the e4 pawn. There was also a possibility of allowing black to jump with the knight to f4, this is the move rook d1. The aim of that move is just to go back with the bishop to f1, so right now black cannot exchange it for his knight. Knight e5, knight c4, and g5. This move definitely aims to get some control on the king side. Okay, so Boris Paski just took on h5. Definitely from the psychological point of view, it was really difficult position for, for white. But definitely the position is absolutely equal and it's not nothing uh, so scary for white right now. He still gets some good chances. Knight c4 was played in the game. If white would opt for a4, then knight e5 and knight d1, quite a standard move. Right now white is ready to get some good defensive resources. After knight e3, knight g4. This is quite a standard position in Benoni, and definitely the position is about equal. But of course, white ne black needs to be careful here, because queen f6 would be outright bad. After bishop d2, queen g6, bishop c3, definitely white has some very good grip, and the pawn on d6 is very very weak. After, for example, b6, maybe f5 would be some better chance, but after f3, bishop d7, computer still holds that position, but I would say that white has much more easy game here. The pawn on d6 will be weak till the end of the game. Definitely better choice would be g3, and after fg3, rook e5, knight f7, again, computer assesses that position as much better for white, but I think that black will get some good counterplay with his active bishops, and this is worth a pawn. Okay, let's go back a little bit to the game. Knight c4 was played in the game. Knight e5, knight e3, queen h4, bishop d2. Boris Spassky just wants to complete his development. F3 was here possible, some good prophylaxis definitely. After knight b5, queen e7, a4, a6, knight c3, b6. 
quite a standard move in Benoni, just not allowing white to play a5. After b6, a5 is of course not so good because right now b5 and black will get some good counterplay on queenside. Okay, so bishop d2 was played in the game. Knight g4. Right now, after that move, the pawn structure will be better. Knight f3 was, of course, not so good because after gf3, bishop e5, rook fc1, and there is simply nothing for black here. The king will simply escape. So knight g4, knight g4, hg4. Right now, the pawns on king side are not anymore that weak, but still, the pawn on g4 may look like a little bit too, too far away from the king, but still, this is double edged position. Bishop f4. It was very interesting here to play the move knight e2, after which two different approaches for black. For example, f5, then knight g3, f4, or even bishop e5, after ef5, rook f8. And right now, black will get some good counter chances against white's king. After, for example, rook f1, bishop f5, Knight f5, of course, this is not so good, but there are good defensive resources for white still. Okay, bishop f4, queen f6, g3. This is not the losing move, but definitely this is not the best resource. Better was just to play, for example, queen d2, and it would be quite similar to the game. Or even bishop g3, and after h5, some good counter move, which is move f3. After h4, bishop e1, at some point it can, it can become very windy around black's king. Okay, queen f6, g3, bishop d7. Right now the position for black is more pleasant. a4, d6, quite a standard move. Of course, black cannot play a6 immediately due to the move a5. So b6, good move just to pre prepare some push of uh, pawns on queen side. Rook f1, a6, rook e2, and b5. This is the good moment to start that push. After rook e7, rook a1, still white would get some good counter chances because pawns on queen side can become very weak and can become an easy target. Okay, so b5, rook a1, after a b5 and trying to simplify the position a little bit, it doesn't help much white. Right now after rook a1, it would be even possible to play that variation. Rook e5, b4, and of course, this is, this is some, no, not, not that line maybe, but there are many, many good chances to obtain some good play. For example, just d5 immediately. After b4, knight e2, even knight a4, and queen a6, of course, not queen h6. Okay, so after d5, even that was possible. And here, of course, the position of white is totally collapsing because the queen side is totally, totally bad for white. Okay. So this is why Boris Paski is trying to do something in the center. Queen g6. Very good move, just spinning the e4 pawn. Right now e5 is not possible anymore. b3. Rook e7. After b bishop c3, it wouldn't be so good. Of course, exchanging such powerful bishop for only the pawn couldn't, couldn't be any, uh, any, any, good, any more good. And right now white gets some good counterplay. So definitely some good choice from uh, from Robert Fisher. He didn't want just to grab that poisoned pawn. Queen d3, rook b8. A b5, a b5. Of course, bishop b5 and is of course not so good because it's better just to have that strong bishop pair. B4, just to block the advance of the b pawn. C4. Of course, after c b4. 
then it could come knight a2 and again white is still alive. So c4, this is very good and precise move. Queen d2, rook b8, rook e3. Of course, bishop g5 is simply losing a piece. So it's not possible. So this is why Boris is trying to, to strengthen his position with that rook move. h5. Again, taking on c3 wouldn't be so good, because taking that pawn simply cannot be fine. So good calculation from Robert Fischer. He is simply just improving his position with move h5. Rook 3 to e2. King h7. Again, some useful move. Rook e3. As you can see, it's not easy for Boris Spassky to find some active plan. Some repetition. And finally, Robert Fischer just took the pawn. Queen e4. Bishop h6, trying to mate opponent, but of course Robert is c what, what is the threat. After bishop d6, queen d5, and it wouldn't be any, any, bigger, any bigger difference. So queen g6, bishop c1, queen b1, king f1, bishop f5, king e2, and finally, after, bishop, after queen d4, bishop d3, King e1, queen b4, it of course it's totally bad position for white. And this is why Robert, uh, why Boris Spassky just resigned. As you can see, very clever play and very, very, uh, very creative play from Robert James Fisher. It was absolutely shocking queen because especially of that move knight h5, which was at that time absolutely shocking move. So very creative, very nice idea from the world champion. Okay, let's move on to the second game between Daniel Dubov and Badru Jabava, played in 2014. <coughs> this is of course the starting position of Benoni. h3, one of the possible setups. Castles, bishop d3, knight a6, castles, knight c7. Again, one of the possible plans in Benoni. This transfer of the knight to c7 just helps black to push the pawns on queen side. a4, a6. Right now black is not frightened of a5 from white because after bishop d7 the knight will have some good outpost on b5. So bishop f4. White is trying to put some pressure against the d6 pawn. Rook b8, a5. And right now, not bishop d7 because the d6 pawn would be hanging, and Jabava is starting some immediate, immediate action with this pawn, b5. a b6, rook b6, rook a2, and knight b5. Quite an interesting and intriguing idea. Let's have a look at some other moves. For example, if bishop d7, of course right now this move is possible because a rook from b6 is defending this d6 pawn. After knight d2, bishop b5, knight c4, bishop c4, knight d7, quite a standard position for Benoni. Black has some good control over the dark squares, but of course he has less space. After rook e8, queen d3, this is probably not so good idea to play that way for black. So better choice would be just to go for some other variation. Let me show you. This is of course fine line, but right now it is better just to play knight d7 to transfer the knight to e5 or even queen to f6. Rook a8 and maybe white still is retaining some small pressure, but all of three results are still possible in that position. If, for example, rook b4, then after bishop h2, there were some threats with taking on d5 and bishop on f4 could be hanging. Knight b5, this is again quite a standard idea. Knight e8, queen c1, and queen f6. Right now, black is threatening to take on c3. So, e5. You always have to be careful with that such ideas, because right now, 
knight can come to e4 with tempo. And this is all of everything just for the pawn. But again, this position should be approximately equal. So this was some other possible idea for Badur Jobava. But he decided to play in some other fashion. He played immediately knight to b5. Knight e2. Tub of Daniel doesn't want to exchange any pieces because when you have more space, you have to remember when it's when it's better just to not exchange any pieces. Rook e8 and knight d2. White's knight went a little bit back, but it's still good position for white. Rook b8, bishop h2, and h5. After queen e7, rook e1, knight d7, the position is still approximately equal. Adur Jabava is trying something else. h5, king h1, and h4. This is, I would say, something like computer move. I would say alpha zero, alpha zero likes that type of moves, push, pushing his uh, h or a pawns. And Badur Jabava played here a very, very creative and very interesting idea. f4. If bishop f4, then knight h5, bishop e3, knight d4. Right now black is very active and this definitely compensates his missing space. After bishop d4, c d4, rook b4, I would say that this position is definitely more pleasant for black to play. But definitely computer still thinks that it's approximately equal. But from human point of view, I would say that it's much more easy to play that position with black pieces. Dubov is trying to do something on king side. f4, knight c7, knight c3, rook b4. Very good play from Badru Jabava. He is trying to get as much activity as possible. Right now, after knight c4, it is possible to just to take on c4. This is again quite a standard move in Benoni system. And after queen e7, the compensation for black is very, very fine. Just look at the king side of white and also look at the bishop on h2. It is very passive and definitely this is very good compensation for black. So Dubov doesn't want to allow black to do so, so queen f3. Knight b5, bishop b5, a b5, e5. Dubov is just striking in the center. After b3, knight d7, again it would be approximately equal, but I would say that again black's chances from human point of view would be more easy. So Dubov is trying to seek some activity. Knight h5, knight d to e4. Ed6 is definitely not the best idea because black is not forced to take on d6, but just to play bishop f5, and this position simply must be better for black. So knight d to e4. At least uh, white gets some activity with his knights. d5, f5 bishop f5, just to cover the f7 pawn. d6. If knight d6, then rook e5. Rook a6. If white is taking again this exchange, then of course rook f4. And again, this position is very very good for black, because he is so active and the pawn on d5 is rather loose. I'm sure that Jabava would find that move rook e5. Rook a6, then knight g3 is possible, but still this position is approximately equal. After rook b2, it's not the best idea because tactics doesn't work good for black. So again, as you can see, white is not so bad in that position. Dubov is trying some other idea. d6. Bishop e5. Bishop e5. Rook e5. Rook a8. Very good move from Dubov Daniel. I'm not sure if Chopova missed that move. Probably not. But he just allowed that move. Of course, bishop c8 is not working because f7 is hanging. 
So he is forced to take on a8. Knight f6, knight f6. Queen a8 and king g7. This is a very unbalanced position. Of course, black has some minor piece and a rook and a pawn and uh, for, for the queen. And I think that this is a very interesting position and it's not that easy to play for both sides. Of course, the pawn on d6 have to be careful because, because it can be very dangerous at some point. But on the other hand, it's still quite loose. Here, rook e1 was played. After queen c1, b4, knight a4, rook g3, again, it should be just a draw. So this was one of the possible lines. Instead, Dubov played rook e1. Takes, takes, and b4. After rook b2, queen e5, again, this is approximately equal and should just end with a draw. Instead, Jobava is playing for a win, b4. Knight a4 and c4. Right now, pawns on queen side are becoming very, very dangerous. King h2. If queen e5, then rook d2, and again, this position should be approximately equal. Rook d6, and for sure you cannot lose that position with black pieces. You can only seek for some winning chances, but probably it should be just a draw. But of course, black could still try to do something in that position. Instead, Dubov played immediately king h2, rook g3. Knight c5, c3, bc3, bc3, queen e5. This position is still not so bad for white. c2. But right now, Dubov is making a very, very bad move and probably the deciding mistake. Still, after queen b2, king g8, queen b8, this should be just a draw because black cannot avoid this repetition. Instead, d7, c1 queen, d8 queen, after queen f6, d8 queen, of course there is no perpetual check. After queen h6, this knight is simply lost. So, d8 queen and queen g5. Right now, where despite that white has two queens, not even one but two queens, this position is simply lost because king is in too big danger. Queen a1. Of course, queen e2 is losing due to not so difficult tactics. Bishop h3. After queen d to d2, gh3 would result with rook h3 and queen g3 mate. And of course, queen c5 with totally collapsing position. If king h1, then rook h3. And bishop e4, again, not so difficult tactics. Of course, knight e4 would lose also, because queen on d8 is hanging. And knight f6. And this is, of course, just a matter of not so difficult technique to, to win that position. So, what else? Dubov is trying to do something else. Queen a8. Queen d2. Queen c6. If queen e7, then of course rook h3. And this is just a forced mate. So queen c6 and king h7. Brilliant end of the game. After queen e f6, then of course the same motif. And if, for example, knight d3, then bishop e4, one of the queens will be lost. And of course the game is also lost. And for example, here if queen c to f6, then of course queen g2 with m8. So brilliant game from Badr Jabava. Very, very creative ideas and very dynamic and ambitious play from him. Of course, Dubov still could make a draw if he didn't only blunder with the move d7. Probably he overlooked the move queen g5 with a winning position. So the third game will be between Burganize and world champion Mikhail Tal, played in 1957.
Let's move on. We will see a very brilliant attack from the world champion. He is of course very well known for his good attacking skills. Castles, rook e8, knight d2, some standard opening, standard system of a Benoni. Rook e1, knight c7, a4, b6, queen c2, and the start of some very, very creative play of a world champion, knight g4. Gurgenize immediately blunders, move h3 is very, very bad. He should just opt that, for example, for the move bishop g4. This is the computer choice. After bishop g4, knight c4. Of course, it's not that easy to give up your light squared bishop, but in that particular case, it would be very good for white, and probably white is already slightly better. So, due to that variation, the move knight g4 objectively shouldn't be so so good. But uh, depending on what happened in the game, I would say that this was a very interesting idea. It was also possible to play the move knight f3, after f5, h3, knight f6. Also the move knight e5 was possible. After bishop f4, knight f3, bishop f3, g5, bishop d2, and g4. A very complicated position would arise with both chances having having good uh, good chances to obtain some good counterplay and some good play. It was also possible to retreat with a knight to f6, after ef5 or even bishop g5, then h6. Again, it's not so good. Uh, it's not so good looking to give up your bishop, but still this position is very calm and should be approximately equal. So white definitely still would be holding. Even ef5 would be possible. And knight e4. Quite a standard reaction from white. And of course this is quite a typical idea which I mentioned in the introduction to our course. The move c4. Just to sacrifice this pawn for some activity. And definitely bishop pair and very active knight on c5 would guarantee some good compensation for the pawn. And this should be approximately equal. Even computers, which is which likes the pawns and material advantage, thinks that this position, this position would be equal. Okay, h3 is of course a very bad move. Knight f2. Right now knight e5 wouldn't be so good, of course, because white would get so many moves and so good attacking chances in that position. So knight f2, king f2. Again, very bad choice from Gorganitza. He was probably surprised with that move and he probably overlooked some tactics. Knight f3 would still be holding that position. Two different possibilities. After bishop c3, bc3, knight e4, bishop d3, knight g3. This is a very complicated position. After bishop g5, f6, bishop f4. I wouldn't advocate that variation for black because despite that he has some pawns, this, his position is uh, very passive. And I would say that our aim in Benoni is just to get as much counterplay and as much active position as possible. Again, this position is assessed by computer as approximately equal, but this time I would say that this is much easier to play for white. So I wouldn't say that the move bishop c3 is the best idea. Better just is just to hold on with the attack. Knight h3, gh3, bishop h3, bishop f4, queen d7. Just continuing your, our attack. Bishop g3, bishop g4. This is of course some computer variation. And after regaining at least one pawn with the move queen b5, this position is approximately equal. So definitely this was something much better than what was played in the game. Because king f2 is probably the deciding mistake. Let's see how Mikhail Tal conti continued his attack. King f1, of course king g1 then queen e1. So it was impossible to play with uh, king to, to find some shelter. Bishop d4. 
Knight d1. It may look like that everything is simply holding, because after bishop h3, rook a3, bishop d7, rook knight knight e3, there is no mate, and probably black should go for perpetual ch uh, check. Because after bishop e3, knight d5, suddenly it turns out that this position is very bad for black. But of course, Mikhail Tal saw some other idea. Queen h3, absolutely brilliant idea. Of course, gh3 would result with bishop h3 mating white's king. Maybe this was what Gurgenize overlooked. Queen h2, knight e3, f5. Mikhail Tal is very precise in continuing his attack. f4, just to open the f file to attack. Bishop e4, bishop a6. Right now only knight from c7 is not attacking white's king, but still this is enough to win that game. Rook e5. Thanks to the pin uh, on a6 f1 diagonal, this move is possible. Rook a3, rook a2 e8. Bishop d2. This move is just losing on this spot. But still after king e2, queen f4, King d1. Black should be very precise because he is right now making the only moves. But this is definitely enough just to win that game. Because, of course, black is two pawns up and this should be just a matter of technique. But as I mentioned, Mikhail Tal would be forced just to make the only moves. Bishop d2 is so easy after the move, bishop d after the move knight d5. So the last piece right is in the is in the attack against white's king. Bishop d5. Of course, knight d5 would be a mate. And bishop d5 still rook d5 is possible because the same idea after the move knight d5. So king e2, bishop e3, rook e3, bishop c4, and Gurganize said that this is enough because uh, of course when it could come queen g2 and queen d2. Absolutely brilliant play from the magician from Riga. This is how Mikhail Tal is called. I would say that this was a very stunning uh, game and I would love to play such game with black pieces when I'm playing Benoni defense. So this was the chapter one with some illustrative games. In next chapters we are going to see some theory of this very very good and very dynamic defense. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.